guys, this is Shannon Kelly. I'm going to make a, a very in-depth tutorial on how to run any push pin call, even mine, very well. And, and I'm going to talk about some basics and probably ramble about stuff, you know. But anyway, this is my personal call. This is my call that I've had it for over 10 years um, that I have consistently had very good luck with and has fooled many a gobbler. Many a hard-hunted Florida public pressured bird and in some several other states too so anyway this is Macassar Ebony and this is one this and the Blackwood are the ones that I recommend the most for uh, for for pro for the best sound out of any call that people make my calls differ they have a East they have a Macassar Ebony and an East Indian Rosewood soundboard that I personally make and lay up if you see it right there it's not a three ply Baltic birch like whether other call makers make and that when they have a three ply, well, two are going this way, one is going this way, and it has the effect of muting down your call and makes it sound more mellow. Kind of like if you're using a pot call and you're wearing a glove, it'll it'll settle down. Now, the basics of the, the call is the most thing you must understand is that this little piece of this little thing right here, that's titanium. That's what I make out of. You probably never need to surface treat that. Okay, that is the call. This is a striker. This little peg right here. And it's cross-cut poplar, and the grain is running from down the bottom like a ramp straight up, and that is very important. There's special washers in there, and it's it's extremely important. The striker is extremely important. The soundboard is what the soundboard is is a soundboard is an artificial grip onto the striker and causes it to move back and forth. And when you're yelping on the call, the proper way to do it is to hang onto the pin and pull the box. <laughs> when you do it that way, what that does is that gets a break note and what happens is the peg is moving this way and that way and this way like a thousand times a second and then as it gets whipping pretty good it starts to trampoline it starts to bounce up and down and it gets like a slip it, it gets a slip note before it starts to bounce and it gives a nice break open break over on itself <laughs> versus doing it like this which you know all those big call makers you know do and they're banging out 10,000 calls, making a dollar off each one and selling them in every, you know, every sporting goods store in the world. And they don't really sound as good, you know. But anyway, so here, uh, another feature is that my calls have a little bit of an oversized hole in for the, the, the peg. And that is the pin, which I call the pin or the peg, the pin, because that allows lateral movement. So if you notice, if you look at the hole, you still... And that's a sharp. The peg will shake. Look at the peg shake. And the, the unique feature of a push pin call is that the clucks, um, the clucks have a front and a back end. A lot of people that are calling out there, a lot of novice callers, they'll do clucks. They won't do clucks. They'll just sound like they're striking a match, you know. But this cluck will have a front and a back end to it. So here we go. So um, one thing I like to say is like, you know, remember the comedian Chris Farley he used to say that uh, he famously said, he says, I have one character, but I do it in different volumes. Well, a cluck is the same way. So this is very soft. And what I'm doing is I'm resting my hand very lightly on the bottom of the soundboard as a dampener. And I'm just giving, a, again, my fingers right up here and I'm holding it down. Now, this is level and this is down. OK. And a lot of times with my lighter spring, I'll explain something to you. So. And then. Now the sound is, you know, of course only six inches away from the recording device. So I'm going to step back a little bit and I'm going to give you a sequence of calls to make you hear what it sounds like at, you know, 20 yards away or, you know, calls going to sound completely different than what it does six inches up, you know, as the sound waves travel to it. So that's the cluck. And it's a regular cluck. Listen to it very closely. You hear a front and a back end to it. Now I point it down like this. very very realistic okay and as you want to go sharper like say you want to go in an area and do some cutting and running well you put your finger on top of this and you notice this is level and this is pointing down so what I'm going to do is do some cutting okay and that's cutting so from soft to regular cut clucks You want to play hard to get. You don't want to be yelping up a whole bunch and, you know, 
you know, sound realistic, regular clucking is the way to go, and then cutting. And you can get a good reaction out of the birds that way, okay? So let's start with the yelping here. Yelping, out, you know, rest this against my knee and, you know, so... Okay, you want, again, the box moves. The box is actually the striker and the call's moving. You wouldn't take a pot call, hold it upside down, and move the, the pot over the striker, and you wouldn't do that with, a, with the same with a push pin. A push pin is really a, a, slate, a reverse infracted slate call. The sound waves bounce down on here, and, and, and that's the way it goes. It's kind of like a guitar or a fiddle, okay? Let's do the yelp again, okay? Notice the pin. I'm not pulling the pin. You can't, can, but I'm not pushing the pin. I'm moving the strip. Okay, now for the purrs. This is a tricky part, okay? Lock your finger up like this. Put it right in here just like that. Hold it just like this. Here's soft. I'm... Here's soft now. Notice how this, this, the tone changes as soon as I just gently touch it. And you can get fancy, you can lift your hand up so you can change the tone in the middle of the volume. And that's how you do that. Now, fighting rattle, I've killed a lot of birds. These calls make excellent fighting rattles. So here we go. It's going to mash your finger down. You're not pressing down on it hard. You're just locking up your finger like this. Okay. Now when I have two, it's very impressive sounding. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back and I'm, for about 30 seconds, I'll give a couple sequences. I'll do some soft clucks, clucks. Cutting, yelping, fighting rattle, all that, okay? Now, the good thing about these calls is you can shift the call around. You can throw the volume around. So if you're sitting against a tree, you want to make the bird sound like this way, call this way. You want to make it sound this way, well, you just move the button. And it really throws, at a distance, it's very convincing. So anyway, let me step back a little bit, and I'm going to do a call sequence for you. As of recent years, the cluck is one of my favorite calls to use and the most effective. It's one that uh, is probably the most underrated call, I think, turkey hunting. I mean, uh, the birds in my area, and I know in some other areas, they do some yelping, if that. Sometimes they do a lot of yelping, but what they do a lot is a lot of clucking, and then you don't hear it. A lot of times when you get hens up very close to you, you'll hear the clucking. But, of course, your hearing is not as good as a gobbler, and the gobbler can hear that hen. And it, it's something that, for pressured birds, I think that is very effective. You know, it's something that's natural uh, and that a lot of hunters are not doing. Uh, another thing about a pushpin call, it's something that you hear. Uh, when you hear it, you really can't put your finger on it. You can't tell if it's a box, a slate, a tube. It kind of has, you know, similarities in the sounds of each, but it's somewhere in there. And when a gobbler hears it, he's not going to hear it. He's not going to think it's a slate. He's not going to think it's a guy on a box call. He's going to be probably fooled. So here we go again. Remember, we're going to use this little section right here. 
All right, thank you now.